everybody welcome back to my channel I hope you're all doing fine today and um, I think I'm just gonna have another chill day in and out I'm not sure exactly what I'm gonna be up to but I, I think I'm gonna do do it the same way I've always done it play it by ear so um, I, I don't know if I'm going to be doing any shopping today. I certainly feel like it, but I'm um, not sure if I'm up to tackling the crowds in stores. So we'll have to play that by ear and see what um, what comes up. And uh, I don't know. I just There's so many different things that I, I want to get done besides going to the store. But um, I'm just going to play this by ear. So we'll have to see how this goes. I'll talk to you later. guys I'm here at the Dollarama I just realized that I don't have any more cotton pads and I also want to go through the arts and crafts section so uh, I guess I'll see you inside and uh, just hang on while I grab my stuff and go Very cool. Yeah. This is why I never go there. <laughs> this aisle is always packed. What I'm actually looking for um, are those canvases that they used to sell. I haven't found any in the longest time. Oh, do I see some up ahead? I'm not sure. I love the style, guys. But you know, it's almost as though every time I come, it's filled with children who are running and jumping around. Um, it's very hard to get into the aisle, actually. That's a nice size. And if you ask me whether I want to water paint or oil paint or whatever, I don't know. <laughs> I don't know. good enough for that size that's for sure <laughs> look at that these are the ones that I love doing but they're so relaxing but they only have 
juvenile films. They don't have, you know, the real, I like that. That's interesting. Um, yeah, I, what I'm trying to say is I'm, the prints are not for me. <laughs> so I'll bypass those today. Okay, um, now I need some cotton pads for my face and we're all set. love these things guys no matter how childish or juvenile <laughs> look at how cute what I adore are some of these containers um, they're so cool Thankfully, I don't need anything today except for the cotton pads. Just can't resist looking at it. I don't need any of it, but I have to look at it. <laughs> Just so interesting, you know? Okay. I don't see any. Normally, they're right here. Oh, here they are. And I want square. If I can't find square, I don't want them. Nope. Oh. Hmm. Yeah, I'll wait because um, my containers are now square. And so I know that I saw them somewhere else last week at another Dollarama. And so I think I will go back to that one. <laughs> Just look at all these cool gadgets, guys. I never get tired of looking at these. It's, I have so many obsessions, don't I? <laughs> Especially with Dollarama. Actually, I could do with a different color pair of socks. I'm getting a little tired of the one color that I have, but I don't see it. Okay. Wow. Those are really thick. They would be uncomfortable for me. Um... Okay, I don't see the color I need, so I will just stop here, and I'll, I'll catch up with you later. I don't know if I'll be at home or on the road when I catch up with you, but I'll talk to you later. Bye-bye. Hi, guys. Um, I just stopped off here for a little break. I needed some fresh air because I've been cooped up in my house for so long. Um, I don't give myself enough chance to get out there and walk around as much. I don't like the rain, that's why. Um, but, um, you know, I've been thinking, if there's anybody out there who's lucky enough to be in Europe right now, specifically Italy, near the region of Cremona, uh, that's very close to Venice, 
then you can begin to imagine why it was that a little girl in northern Italy um, wanted so badly to capture the beauty, the pure beauty of um, that region on canvas in oil. Um, she came from that region. Her name was Sophonisba Anguissala, and she was a child prodigy who had the opportunity to be born um, to, into a family who could provide her with much more than any other child could have been provided with. She did have siblings, but she was the star artist of her family. And um, her dad, her dad was, I guess you would probably call him a curator. He would uh, collect and display on a professional basis masterpieces. Um, and he had all kinds of links to artists. And um, like Michelangelo and Raphael, Sophonisba did have the opportunity to become trained along with a couple of her sisters professionally. And so, um, as I said, however, she was the firstborn and she was, um, she was the child who was given the most opportunity. And so um, she was accredited by Michelangelo. And um, guys, she, she became lucky enough to go on to become a court painter at the Habsburg court in Spain. And, um, but you know, she became much more than that. For a woman to have a role like that at court in those days, um, she, it was incredible. Uh, she did so much for children. She brought so much um, recognition for other children to be recognized for their own amazing talents and skills as, as artists, musicians, whatever. Uh, she did a lot. She did a lot for her career, and she also did a lot in the name, uh, how do I explain this? Ugh. She had such a humanizing effect um, at court, because, you know, during the time of the Spanish conquest, racial tensions ran very, very high. Um, if you all remember studying about Carlos V, um, Charles V. Uh, she had such a humanizing effect. And it was a time where women and children were being taken as slaves and wives. Um, you know, uh, all across the Americas, they were being captured. It was a horrible time for people to adjust to. Um, but Sophonisba, she had an amazing effect on uh, at court. She was the humanizing. She was the humanizing factor. She, if, if anybody would have reasoned with royalty as to their approach uh, into taking on all of these women, children, and uh, women and children captives, it would have been Stephanie's. But anyway, uh, enough of my rambling. I guess I'll see you guys back at home. Bye-bye. And um, I hope that you enjoyed uh, or got some sort of um, satisfaction out of that little bio that I gave you before. You know, Sophonisba Anguissala is one of my favorite northern Italian artists. And so many of the best artists from Italy came from that part of Italy. And um, the way that they make everything sparkle, that part of the region 
is, is I don't know how to explain this it just comes so much alive with all that reflected uh, lights from the water and um, the humidity it really does something to the atmosphere and it makes everything just appear very surreal um, there are no clean or sharp edges there <laughs> at least not on a regular basis but um, you know like I was saying, Stephanie's by Anguissala was much, much more than an artist. She was a political figure. She was very influential at the court, and all the popular issues went to her. Um, I don't know exactly if her role was extended as a caregiver. I think it might may have been. I, I don't remember from my research coming across that, but um, I remember writing an essay about her just the following autumn, and I was so, you know, I was so, how do I say this, I was so astounded that I was able to choose a subject that I came so close to. Uh, I, I had seen her home region, I had, you know, experienced what she saw, and it, it was it brought me very close to her in the way that I could look at her paintings and almost try to think what she was feeling. And um, like I was saying, I don't know if she was a caregiver per se, but I know that she did paint the children at the court, and um, she uh, was very favored at the court. Uh, you know, even with the women, uh, the male figures and the children, she was uh, very popular at the court and uh, Habsburg court in Spain. And um, I think what I'm trying to get at is that with all the things that are going on, even to this day in our very age in the world, so many countries need help. And praying somehow just doesn't make it enough, mostly. Um, you know, we need more humanitarian figures in the world. Figures that can really influence men in war, men at war. Um, you know, people who have no other alternative but if they want to stay alive, they have to take matters into their own situ into their own hand hands. So um, what I'm saying is that I'm wondering what she would have been able to do for us today if she was still alive. I know that she did a lot during the Spanish conquest. She tried to do her best. Um, still, so many lives were tragically lost and those who would not convert to um, Christianity, um, they did so with righteous, with a right, you know, I, I don't know how to explain this. They should have been free to choose for their own selves what religion they, they should have, you know, pursued. But I, I think, you know, the the bottom uh, at the bottom of all of it was you know the war the spanish conquest was basically fought for the purpose of uh eradicating crime but it didn't it didn't make sense the way that it was done you know what i'm saying at least not to me that would have been a very cruel way to tear everybody's life apart just for criminals that would not obey universal law um you know i i just can't imagine what what the turmoil might have been like in those days during the spanish conquest um all those states coming together by force uh it must have been bedlam anyway guys um <laughs> Enough of my rambling for tonight. I, I will link, I have another channel in which I had, um, went over the life of uh, Stephanie's by Anguissala. She was one of the many artists who really, really fascinated me. And so I, I did a three-part series on her on my other channel. 
where I never upload anymore. And um, not because I've run out of ideas, but um, it's uh, maybe I should try to upload. I don't know. Um, my devices were all dying on me, so I gave up. <laughs> um, I, you know, I, I will link the articles, the um, presentations down below. And, um, you know, if anybody out there is interested in, in more links, just let me know because I, there's so many great channels out there that talk about artists. And art is the sort of language that we need to use more and more uh, on a universal basis because art, trans art transcends um, all issues. It can overcome all all issues it can find a common ground for everybody where we can meet and get together maybe not physically but you know where we can have a meeting of the minds and i i think really basically guys all of us deep down are the same and we all want the same things don't we for me it's peace equality and opportunity, of course. <laughs> so um, anyway, guys, I, I think that's it for today. I'm going to try to upload another story time. A story time, I, I thought I would do one about Isabel and I abroad, but I think I might put that off for another little bit. And I'll do a story time about me in Northern Italy in 2016. It kind of goes with today's episode, don't you think? Um, I'll see if I can get that up tonight, if not tomorrow. And so um, I hope everybody out there is having a great day. And um, thank you so much for listening and watching. And please don't forget to like and subscribe. Bye for now.